Dear honored guests, come and join me for episode 22. Jesus moves his ministry after John is arrested. Let's go to Pastor Kenny's house as he concocts his morning java before Bible study. Welcome back, friends. Today we're going to learn about Jesus moving his ministry when John is arrested. We're also going to hear another song written by Philbert about Granny Soup. I apologize. Come and see. Ten minutes later, Pastor Kenny drives to church. I will not give in and buy a minivan, even though it's hard to enjoy my coffee with so many people in this car. Hey there, friend. I asked this rather sketchy seller of Mama's Jalapenos to give you the four options of what I am drinking. What's Pastor Kenny stirring into his coffee? Uh, listen up, after the Bible study, you meet me in the alley, I'll slide you some of my Mama's prized Jalapenos. But keep your trap shut. Capiche? You read the word, you pay the price. I'll raise your price by a couple extra bucks and your jalapenos will be moldy. Um, now, let's get back to dealing with this American. What does Pastor Kenny use to sweeten his coffee? One, sugar. Two, cream. Three, honey. Or four, sunshine. Ha! The correct answer is two, cream. Why is cream flying everywhere? Do you not all see this, no? Hello, people? It, it, this is not normal? No, no, anybody? Wow, Bouncing Cream. We need to speak to the graphics department about that. After happily cleaning up all the delicious cream, Pastor Kenny hops to the lectern ready to teach the children. Before we start our lesson, is there anything on your mind you want to share? Yeah. I'm here to listen. What's going on? I'm worried about my friend, Mr. Tiddlywinks, my neighbor. He just got up and moved in the middle of the night. That does sound strange. Any idea why he left? Not at all. Like, me and Cecil started an awesome garage band and we practice right outside of Mr. Tiddlywinks' house. We, like, play about six hours each night starting at midnight. <coughs> Sorry, just like my penny stocks, my voice has not returned. <coughs> Anyways, every night we practice Phil Burt's quaint little song called Granny Soup right now. I brought a cardboard cut out of Granny. It's all good. I couldn't see anyways. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> that That's different. Like about a week after we began our late night jam sessions, Mr. Tom Tiddlywinks like moved out in the middle of the night. I'm starting to piece it together. So, what's this song about? Hey, that Cecil! Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Granny, don't leave me now. I need your soup right now. My uh -huh. poor of me feels too for me. me. I love your soup in my me. Granny, don't say no. That was very interesting. Well, that was unique. <laughs> now I know how Mr. Tom Tiddlywinks feels. You see, maybe he does have something in common with Jesus. For all you teachers out there, this is called refocusing the conversation. Because in today's episode, Jesus is also going to move, but for a different reason. Jesus is leaving because his cousin, John has been arrested, and the Pharisees are coming to investigate Jesus. As you can see, this narrative can be found in the Bible in all four Gospels. Take some time and read these passages for yourself. The events in this episode happened around the year 27 AD in Judea and Enon near Salim. Today's main proverb is, John glorified God and did not promote himself. It's time for the narrative. Let's learn. After Jesus talks with Nicodemus, he takes his five disciples and goes to the Judean countryside. It is a peaceful place where Jesus spends time preaching while his disciples baptize people. 
Jesus' cousin, John the Baptizer, is nearby at a beautiful spot called the Enon Springs near Salim. This area has lots of water and is perfect for baptisms. John is kept busy because a lot of people come to hear him preach and to be baptized. John has big crowds, but he points all of them to Jesus. So many people are leaving John to see Jesus. Some of the people listen to Jesus' words and are saved. When anyone believes his words, they go into the water and one of his disciples baptizes them. However, this causes some of John's disciples to become jealous. During this time, some of John's disciples get into an argument with an unknown Jewish man about baptism and tradition. They don't know what to do, so they go to John and say, Teacher, remember the man you talked about and spent time with in the Jordan? Well, now he's baptizing people too, and everyone is going to him instead of us. John smiles and tells them, No one is given anything unless it is given to him from God in heaven. You yourselves remember that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I am the one sent ahead of him to announce him. John continues, It's like a wedding. The bride belongs to the groom, not the best man. After all, it's the groom who is getting married. The best man's job is to prepare the groom and stand by him. As he serves the groom, he hears his voice and feels joy in his heart. I feel this joy right now. Jesus must become more important while I become less important. During this time, John has been telling the wicked Herod Anipus to repent for living in sin. This evil man's dad was King Herod the Great who tried to destroy baby Jesus. Anipus is known as Herod the Tetrarch. That means that he is the ruler of a quarter of the kingdom, under Roman supervision, of course. John points out that Herod married Herodias, who was Philip's wife. Philip is Anipus' brother. John tells Herod that this marriage is sinful because Herodias belongs to Philip. Herodias, who is a wicked woman, gets angry at John for pointing out Herod's sin, so she wants to destroy the baptizer. What a wonderful family. Herod wants to listen to the wicked Herodias and arrest John. Even though Herod wants to destroy him, he fears the people because they say that John is a prophet. This terrifies yet kind of intrigues him. So what does he do? He sends some soldiers to arrest John while he figures out what to do. They tie John up and they take him away to prison. Soon after this, Jesus hears that his cousin John has been arrested. He also hears that some of the Pharisees are coming to cause him trouble. So he gathers his disciples, Simon Peter, Andrew, John, Philip, and Nathaniel, and tells them they are going to Galilee. But instead of taking the normal road, he plans on traveling right through Samaria. So, what can we learn from today's narrative? Well, today's proverb is, John glorified God and did not promote himself. You see, John always tried to point people to the Messiah, which glorified God. John knew that Jesus was like the groom and Israel was like the bride. John wanted all of Israel to glorify God by accepting Jesus as the Messiah. He also tried to point Herod to God by telling him to repent of his sin. John would be punished for putting God's word above Herod's sin, but he did not care. After all, he did not promote himself. He simply wanted Herod to glorify God. Are you like John? Do you glorify God or do you promote yourself? So take today's proverb, turn it into a question and ask yourself, do I glorify God or do I promote myself? So what happens next? Jesus will walk into the seemingly wicked region of Samaria. He will be hungry and tired. Then. He'll meet a really bad woman. 
Find out what happens next by reading John chapter 4 in the Bible and watch our next episode. As Bible study wraps up, Mr. Nathan goes outside to order a rather creamy pizza. Kind of disgusting for my refined taste. Oh, well. I like to put in an order for a cream pizza. How dare you, sir? How dare you? Never will I use my talents on such a corrupt pizza as a cream pizza. You hear me? Never. Um, I'll give you a nice tip. I will be there in ten minutes, sir. No problem at all. Glad to be a service to you. Bit the bang, bit a boom. Bring this cream pizza and not mushrooms. After polishing off most of the creamy pizza pie, poor Johnson is whisked off to the ER thanks to a single rogue mushroom. Anyways, Pastor Kenny secures the church's lock with a click and a clack and toddles off to his cosy abode. At home, with the kettle humming gently and the stars twinkling as if they too are pondering life's mysteries, he settles into his favorite chair. So, what did we learn today? John wanted Jesus to be famous. John was a humble man who understood that Jesus was like the bridegroom and he was just like the best man. John found fulfillment in guiding Israel, the bride, towards Jesus. Are you like John who desired people to come to Jesus? Also, John always stood for the truth. John wasn't afraid to speak to Herod about the leader's sin because John valued God's word more than his own comfort. Why did he do this? It was because he loved God deeply. If you also have a strong love for God, you will find yourself in situations where you'll need to stand up and address someone's sin. In those moments, be brave and follow John's example. And don't forget today's proverb, John glorified God and did not promote himself. See you next time. In the wilderness, John proclaimed, Christ is coming, the Lamb ordained. John's ministry points the way to Jesus, the light of day. Lamb of God and waters night, identified by God most high. Face temptation, but he won. Ministry has just begun. Behold the Lamb who takes away every sin in spirit and truth. Worship and point to Him. Call Him true, John and Simon Peter, fill up the nuts and I'll take you. Did His first miracle in Cana, and He cleansed His Father's house too. Soon He cut Him as He did preach. Moved his ministry when John was impeached. Changed a woman inside Christ's land. Healed a sick son by his command. Behold the Lamb who takes away every sin. In spirit and truth, worship and point to him. Somewhere in a hidden cave in France, a location many soldiers are familiar with. I heard from the locals that I might find the treasures here in this cave. Exploring a cave is like a blind date. You never know what scary face you may see. <laughs> what was that?
<laughs> Don't worry, friend. That was just my tummy growling. 